into order. Um, so, uh, really quickly, a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, if all you care about is site selection uh, and you don't want to see sausage being made, uh, we're going to start making sausage, FYI. Uh, a couple of announcements pertaining to non-site selection-y things. Um, so really quickly, once again, I want to introduce my staff. Um, Alex Axe is our timekeeper, uses they, them pronouns. Kevin Stanley is my deputy, uses he, him. I'm Jesse Lipp, I'm the presiding officer. I use they, them pronouns, and my form of address is mixed chairperson. Uh, Linda Demeroff is our secretary, uh, uses she, hers. Don Eastlake is the parliamentarian, uses he, him. We have three sergeant at arms, Terry Neal, Joe Van Eckeren, and Ann Davenport, who all use she, her pronouns. And then in the back, we have Lisa Hayes, our videographer, who uses she, hers. And once again, sadly absent, uh, is Jared Dashoff, who uh, handled all of the logistics for me, uses he, him pronouns. And I'm sure that Joni still has a picture of him from his wedding, if you need to remember what he looks like. <laughs> Or no, 11, sorry. Yes. Um, let's see. Uh, if you are wishing to speak, um, the way we are doing this is after um, a speaker has spoken at the microphone, I will say that was a speech in favor or against. Is there anyone spe wishing to speak against? Once I finish that last word, that is when you may rise or raise your card to be recognized. If you think of it like Jeopardy, if you jump the gun, your buzzer is dead and you won't get called on. Um, we are asking that uh, when you come to the microphone, you introduce yourself uh, with your name and your pronouns every time. Uh, when I recognize you to speak, I will also recognize which microphone you are coming to speak to, um, unless you are making a very brief like point of order or you are unable to come to up to the podium uh, we would ask you to come up to the podium if if you're unable to do so or you're making a very brief like point of order you can use one of the ro roving mics uh, when you go to speak into the microphone a they need to be held up close to your face um, although the one we have up here is slightly more forgiving also please wait like a second and a half to give um, our lovely tech guy John time to turn your mic on uh, I promise the timekeeper will not take it out of your debate time and if the mic is not on when you continue speaking it's not because it's off and you need to turn it on John just needs to bump it up on the soundboard so just wait another second and a half start speaking again and and it should be on uh, doo -doo -doo. I've now misplaced not just the paper with the Wi-Fi but all of my notes about announcements so am I forgetting anything Okay, we believe that that has covered the announcements I need to give. So, to remind everyone where we left off yesterday. <laughs> we are in D8. D8 is, the short title is No Deadline for Nominations Eligibility. It is on page 10 of your agenda. And we have set eight minutes of debate time for this item. As a reminder, debate times restart at the beginning of each day. Uh, when we left off, an amendment had just been made and seconded to add a sunset clause to D8. There is a handout. It's, um, slide. it's also up on the slide with the exact wording of this sunset clause. Um, amendments are automatically given five minutes of debate time. And so that is where we are. The motion has been made and seconded. And so I will recognize Martin Pine at the podium mic to speak to his amendment. Martin Pine. Martin Pine, he, him. Yes, is there something? No, this is very loud. Martin Pine, he, him pronouns. Thank you, Mixed Chairperson. I am sympathetic to the arguments that we want to encourage participation in the Hugo Awards. However, I looked at and I read all of the Nebula nominees this year, and frankly, I am concerned about, I am concerned that this, since this proposal would allow one to immediately join and immediately join the Hugos and nominate. And I think the biggest threat we actually face right now is, bullet, is, is essentially bullet nominating from authors interested in self-promotion or other, or other issues. So the reason I'm adding, asking to add a sunset clause is if we see a bunch of obviously unworthy works show up that are pretty clearly a case of self-promotion, we can reverse this change fairly easily. 
Thank you. That was a speech in favor of the amendment. Is there a speech against? Recognize Nicholas White up at the podium. Thank you, Mixed Chairperson Nicholas White, uh, he, him. Um, I think the reason that I oppose the uh, five-year five year sunset clause is this. Either this is a good idea or it isn't. If it is a good idea, we don't need a sunset clause. If it is not a good idea, we need to be able to change it a lot sooner than five years, and inserting a sun sunset clause could in fact be counterproductive. This meeting can come back to the issue after two years if it so desires. Mr. Chairperson, I want to say one other thing, which is that I was surprised that this, that this amendment was proposed in the first place, just as we were about to complete a debate yesterday on the substantive motion. Um, I was even more surprised to find the literature that we discussed earlier on the tables this morning. Uh, I'm sorry, and your your debate is not germane to the motion of the amendment. Well, I just want to say that if my ideas are that unwelcome, then I'm sorry, I have to rule you out of order. What you are talking about is not germane to the amendment. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? I recognize Elizabeth up at the podium. Elspeth Kovar, she, her. Some years back, for a long time, I've been wanting to introduce a sunset clause because it's easier to not vote for something than to vote it down. Can you speak and a little bit louder? I'm, I'm sorry, microphone? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Um, I finally got this sunset clause on something because we were debating a Hugo and nobody knew if it would work or not. And I finally said, look, I don't know either. So let's set it up. We have a three-year test on it. And then it automatically goes away. A sunset clause does not mean we have to wait until the end of the five years or the three years or whatever. It means that it will go away if it's not good enough for people to keep voting on it. But that doesn't mean we can't vote it down before that that we do have that flexibility. And that's why it's there. And that first sunset clause was added at the very, very end of the debate. And, you know, boom, went straight through. And as it happened, my recollection is that that Hugo did not get voted on and to, to keep running. But we had a chance to test it. And I think we should be testing things before voting one way or the other. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? I recognize Joshua up at the podium microphone. Joshua, Joshua Kroningold, he, him. Read the previous question. Uh, read the previous question or call the previous question? I call the previous question. Call. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the previous question has been called. Is there anyone still wishing to speak to the amendment? Okay. Uh, so, Yes, what is your parliamentary inquiry? Are we calling previous question? I believe the member is trying to ask our, if we are calling the previous question on the amendment or on the amendment and the main motion. Yes. yes, because the form of the motion was phrased as calling the previous question and did not specify all that is before us, I am assuming that the amendment is what was meant as RONR instructs me to do. And I just got a thumbs up from the maker as well. <laughs> Okay, uh, there has been an objection, so we will move to a vote. All those in favor, uh, to let everyone know, uh, we are moving to close debate and move immediately to a vote. This re does require a two-thirds vote uh, on the amendment only. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor of closing debate on the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And the previous question has been called, and we will, uh, the motion passes, and we will move directly to a vote. All those in favor of the amendment to D8, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the amendment fails. Uh, we are back uh, to D8, um, unamended. The last speech we had, the last speech we had was a speech against uh, yesterday, but that's what it was. Uh, is there a speech in favor? Seeing none, are you wishing to speak in favor? Okay, I will recognize you up at the podium. I see your name for a second, sir. 
Nice. Can you please take off your name tag and give it to the no, secretary? Just, oh, yeah, okay. That's oh, easier. Thank you. Carl Johan Norén, han, he, fru ordförande. Uh, I wish to speak in favor of this amendment. We should not be ruled by fear in this. We already have one except one proven good slate protection mechanism in the E pluribus Hugo. And we should not strain ourselves to put in extra that might not be needed. Thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Uh, I'm going to recognize Perry Ann up at the podium. Uh, Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. While I am sympathetic to increasing the opportunity for participation in the Hugo Awards, we have seen in the past, and I can almost guarantee we will see in the future, that uh, people will game the system and buy their memberships at the time that they nominate just to get things on the ballot uh, that we as a whole would probably consider unworthy. Um, I think that putting in a deadline, which we had for years and years and seemed to work just fine, uh, is not unreasonable. Thank you. That was a speech against. Is there a speech in favor? Uh, I'm going to recognize uh, Terry in the back, up at the podium microphone. Terry Ash, uh, she, her, um, mixed chairperson with your permission. I have a limited number of words today, so if I don't have to consistently repeat my name and pronouns, that would be uh, very useful. Uh, I keep hearing this word unworthy. What does that mean? If, if the point of the Hugo Awards is that they are a, a, an award nominated by and voted on by the body of members, that's what makes something worthy. There is no arbitrary designation of worthy and putting a deadline on membership for nomination does not magically make a work better. Um, thank you. That was a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? I recognize Kevin Stanley up at the podium. Kevin Stanley, he, him. One of the reasons we moved to the earlier deadline was because of potentially adding some extra time to the nomination process that we chose not to do. I believe that the original reason that we had a deadline at all had nothing to do with a certain contrims in 2015. It goes back much further than that. Those of you who have been attending these conventions for more than 10 years are aware that there was a entryism attacked much further than that. It was not nearly as widespread. And we dealt with that by putting in a deadline at the end of January, and we used that for many years. And I think it worked very well. And therefore, I moved to amend the current motion, which is a motion to strike out the word, the motion on the floor is, is to strike out the words as of the end of the previous calendar year. And don't worry, Linda, I do have this in writing for you. Okay. I move to amend by including in this and to insert before the word shall as of January 31st of the current calendar year, which would, thank you, and I, so that's an amendment. May I continue as my speech in favor of it? Yes, since the amendment has been seconded, you may now speak to it, and we are in the five minutes, if there's five minutes for the amendment. There are not five, there are not five minutes. This, Kevin Stanley, he, him speaking in favor. Um, this would return the wording back to where it was before the 2015 and ensuing issues. I believe this is where we really want to be, and I think it would be better off for us all. Entryism is going to be a problem no matter what. And we got around entryism by, by allowing the members of the previous Worldcon 
who presumably will already have been members of the previous Worldcon by January 31st of the current year, to have, be part of it. We are truthfully, we are privileging those members of WSFIS who are showing an ongoing commitment to the organization. Now that might be elitist, and perhaps if it be elitism, make the most of it. But I think that is probably the best compromise to what we are dealing with here. And so I think we are better off adding this amendment and basically returning us to where we were. And I don't see any reason to try and sunset this. Thank you. Okay, that was a speech in favor. Uh, I want to restate the amendment so that everyone is clear on what we are debating. The amendment that has been made and seconded is to insert um, before the word shall. Um, at, no, before. Um, so it will keep as of the end of the previous calendar year stricken and then insert before the word shall as of January 1st of the current calendar. That's what I meant to say, if that's not what I said. <laughs> As of January 31st of the current calendar year, so that that section will read in its entirety, each member of the administering Worldcon or the immediately preceding Worldcon, as of 31st, January 31st of the current calendar year, shall be allowed to make up to, et cetera. Okay, so we have had a speech. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and recognize someone. We have had a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Recognize Todd Dashoff. Please uh, come to the mic and then give the secretary a second to catch up. Todd Dashoff, he, him. Please give the secretary a moment. Okay, um, we're good. Okay. Good. Go okay. Uh, I was in fandom at the point in time at which Mr. Stanley is speaking. However, and, and I agree with the majority of his point. However, I really don't see the point of playing ping pong with January and December. If we're going to say that the people in the previous uh, Worldcon have the ability to nominate, they were members in December as well as they're going to be at January, we're only taking one month's worth of members and saying, you have to do it a little faster. I would like to call the question. Okay, the, that was a speech against, and the previous question has been called and seconded, which I don't think you're actually allowed to do, but um, but I'm going to ask if uh, we are out of time in favor. Uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak against the amendment? Um, okay, uh, because it was not in order for you to call the question at the end of your debate, I am going to recognize Rick up at the podium microphone. Rick Kowalczyk, he, him. My apologies, I was not here yesterday. I was doing other things with the convention. I would also like to point out that technology is not perfect. And in the past, there have been many years when people had to stay up all night giving out Yugo pins and things like that. And really, there is no reason why people should not be required to join their membership, uh, to get a membership a uh, month in advance, and actually take the time to read things rather than having a friend contact them at the last minute and say, can you please buy this membership and nominate, nominate me? Okay, we are out of uh, time uh, for the amendment, so we are going to move directly to a vote. Uh, those in favor of the amendment that inserts as of January 31st of the current calendar year before the word shall, please raise the hand. Thank you. Those against? And the amendment passes. We are out of time for it all. We are out of, we are out of time for the main motion as well, and so we will move. PRK? PRK moves to extend debate times by four minutes. Four is what you said? Yes. By four minutes. Is there a second? Hearing none, debate time is not extended, and we will move directly to a vote. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, you, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay, the motion has now been seconded. Uh, I, 
we have people in this room who have not attended the business meeting before or have not attended it very frequently. We are also a world science fiction convention and not everyone in the room is a native speaker of English. And thus, if somebody seconds a little later than maybe we would all prefer, I am still going to allow it uh, because I believe that that is the best way to make sure that we do the work we need to do. Uh, so we are now going to vote on extending debate. This requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of extending debate by four minutes, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? And debate is not extended and we will move to the vote. All those in favor of D8 as amended, please raise the hand. Thank you. And those against? And the motion passes. Okay. And we are now going to give the secretary a little bit of time.